Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video here. Someone at my church sent me this video and it says the uh, moral dangers of popular and contemporary Christian music. And the description says an excerpt taking from, taken from a series about music from the show Signs of the Times, a program featuring thought-provoking discussion of signs indicative of Christ's imminent second coming. Expert guests uh, join Dr. Willard Register, and that's the guy interviewing the person about various locations around the globe uh, in this series of four excellent shows. Christian music artist uh, Christian Burdahl discusses the moral dangers of popular music and its offshoot, contemporary Christian music, or CCM. And this guy, Christian Burdahl, who we're, we're going to see speak for five minutes, he runs this, uh, this YouTube channel, Shepherd's Call Media, has about 11,000 subscribers, and he brings up the idea of syncopation being in uh, worship music. And, you know, I'm, I'm a worship musician at church, and so this, uh, there's a huge debate that goes on in the Christian music sphere of what, what music to use, who writes the music that we, that we play, all kinds of stuff. And well, he's going to get into the music of modern worship music. So I'm excited to watch this. I've watched it a couple times, and I've, I've taken a few notes that I don't think I need to glance at or whatever, but we're going to watch the, the video, video right here, and I'm going to provide some thoughts. about a five-minute video, so let's see what we got. Certain kinds of music with the back beats, with the accent on the wrong um, beats. For instance, I want to give our viewers a, an example of what I'm talking about. If we are listening to a song, and I'm going to use a simple song like Jesus Loves Me, and I'm just going to say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The emphasis is on the one beat, okay? It's more of a march. Bum, 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 right? And now we can also move the accent. We can duplicate that and put it on the one and on the three. Jesus loves me, this I know. Now, I just want to stop really fast before, we, and, I'll, and I'll rewind this example right here. But when he says on the wrong beat, I mean, okay, so I've, I've struggled for a lot of my music career with the, the concept of syncopation. Now, I'm going to go over to the, the Wikipedia page for syncopation. And syncopation, it's hard to define it as we'll get into why that is in a second, but there's no one clear cut definition. The way I always explain it is it's a rhythm that one would not expect that would defy expectations. Now, what are expectations? They're things that you would expect, but what if the beats that are not expected are the ones you were raised with? In other words, if you're used to hearing something a normal way, there's a thing that can violate that. But what if you were raised and have only been exposed to the rhythm that violates that? That would then become the expectation. So what is really even syncopation in the first place? It's, a, it's kind of a conundrum. I'm not sure if I, uh, if I explain that the right way. It, it's like irony. And, you know, irony is the violation of expectations. But if you look at other cultures, if you try to make American ironic jokes in Asian countries, for the most part, they won't even understand it because they, their set of expectations and their presuppositions is not the same. So is the presuppositions of the West or, you know, the Anglo countries, you know, hold the truth on what syncopation is? I, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, I don't think there's really an answer. In the, I'm not, and I'm not making the argument that there's no such thing as objective truth. What I'm saying is things like irony and syncopation and expectation is those are subjective words. There are other things that are objective things in music. It's like an accent. If a person using a Southern accent their entire life, if a child has heard a Southern accent their entire life, and then they hear a normal accent, which one is normal? It's to me, there, that means there's really no such thing as normal. There's just the way that someone was raised. But let's back it up a little bit for, to have him. Certain kinds of music with the back beats, with the accent on the wrong. So, so the minute that he says wrong, it's a little bit weird to me. I mean, I do obviously believe in objective truth. I think that God is objective truth. When you say the wrong, does God determine that it's wrong? Or does he mean that wrong as in not morally or not objectively. I mean, he means it subjectively because people in other cultures, people in Africa, people in other places, they hear syncopated beats that Westerners hear as syncopated. They, they hear our normal beats or our right beats as syncopated, as violating their expectations. So, you know, which one is which? Um, beats. For instance, I want to give our viewers 
a, an example of what I'm talking about. If we are listening to a song, and I'm going to use a simple song like, Jesus Loves Me, and I'm just going to say, Jesus loves me, this I know. Also, there's words that actually do have the emphasis on the second syllable. I mean, if, you, if, you, if I say Jesus right now, Jesus, that, it, that word does have an emphasis on the first syllable, but there's some words that don't, um, that don't have that. For the Bible tells me so. The emphasis is on the one beat, okay? It's more of a march. Bum, 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 right? But what if there was a song that, that all the lyrics emphasize the second syllable? And now we can also move the accent. We can duplicate that and put it on the one and on the three. G like Isaiah. That's what I was trying to th sit here and think of the, a word that, a that accents the off beat or the second beat, Isaiah. So th that's an example of... Like, is, is any time they're a backbeat, you know, I might even reach out to this guy and try to interview him about this, but is any time something is emphasized on the backbeat or the second, the even beats, is that considered syncopation? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, kind of like a child would say. He's right about how that, that, that specific song sounds, though. It's innocent, it's on the one and three. All we have to do is shift the accent to the two, or to the two and the four, or just the three. Sounds kind of confusing, but it would be like this. Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so, oh, little ones do him beat long. Oh, all of a sudden, you have what, what we call like a rap or a hip-hop feel. It's the same word, same. And he's right about that. That's what rap and hip hop is a little bit more. Type. But there's also rap and hip hop that accents the, the one. Feeling of the, uh, the, excuse me, the same type of melody or whatever. But all we've done is move the accent. And I will concede that it does sound a bit more like tribal or primal or something like the that. The moment we move the. But I, get it, listen to what he gets into in a minute or so. The accent from the one or three, it becomes a syncopated beat syncopation by all occult experts around the world agree syncopation is the source of occult power in pagan worship service. now i have to look more into this people that know me they know that i'm not a very good researcher i don't prepare that much for my videos and things like that i kind of go off the cuff and i i you know i have some christian brothers and sisters that did uh you know before obviously before they were saved dabbled the, in the occult and i'm gonna send this to this one lady that i'm that i'm very good friends with i would like to know that but what i would like to know about that is does that mean all syncopation is because if it's gonna be if it's supposed to be avoided in uh in worship music then it should probably be avoided in all music right i mean if it truly if there's some rhythms and music that are just ungodly then they probably should be sh should be avoided all the time and my next question would be is what about those cultures that i brought up earlier does that mean an african cannot worship in their native rhythm in their native music can, can there not be because african that music is all syncopated to the western ear it all is on the off but it's all on these off beats and these kind of tribal things. And so is this guy making the argument that you can't have worship music in that style? It, it's very bizarre to me. It's not thought out to the nuanced or logical extension. I, I kind of don't understand the implications of what he's doing. And what about music that's pre-West? Yeah, the earliest Christians were not Westerners. These people were Easterners. They were Middle Easterners. They were Mediterraneans. Some of them were, you know, North African. And did they observe the same rule of having no syncopation and thinking that syncopation can't or shouldn't glorify God? But let's just keep listening. Services. Really? Oh, yeah. So this is profound to the Christian. Now we're in a in our homes, we're in our cars listening to Christian music that has all these beats and syncopated things in it, and we're going, oh, this is great, this is wonderful. What it actually does, just like it does to, to ancient voodoo worshipers and modern day voodoo worshipers in their religious services, is it short circuits the frontal moral lobe. It and I would, you know, I would give anything. I mean, look, electricity wasn't around back then. Music, musical notation wasn't really around, wasn't around back then. 
I would give anything to know what the music on both sides sounded like. You know, when in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar tells uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like when when the sound of the flute, the lyre, when all the cymbals play, that they're to bow down to the image that he has crafted. And I wonder what that music sounded like. Gets them to now, here's let me back it up a couple seconds. I am not a brain science bro at all. So he's you know, bringing up a part of the brain that gets activated when uh, syncopation happens. Is he saying that it doesn't get activated at all when the non-syncopated groove, and where's that line? That 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 march beat has beats that it, you know, the, the backbeat isn't, isn't accented, but it's still represented, and you can still kind of feel the backbeat against it without making any sound but to me I look I'm not trying to poo poo this guy I'm only saying that what I'm saying what I'm saying is that my my wheelhouse is music and I've been you know studying the patterns of uh, and observing the patterns of this for a very long time and this seems very oversimplified and very western I mean I'm a western guy I'm I have English descent. I'm from uh, the Detroit area. And maybe I'm just, I have blinders on because I am a rapper, because I'm a hip hop fan, because I'm a big fan of funk, soul, R&B, rock, and stuff like that. But also, if you ask the people I go to ch church with, I'm actually a bigger fan at church of traditional hymns and stuff like that. You know, if you're gonna make a claim that because the occult uses certain things that we shouldn't, I mean, obviously some things like, blood ritual <laughs> blood rituals you know human and animal sacrifices things like that is for sure christians should have no part in but as far as just using specific rhythms people say music is math but really what's going on in music there's about 12 notes i mean they can be tuned different ways but to kind of simplify things there's 12 notes and there's about 32 different rhythms. I mean, I guess you could you could slice that into three or something like that and use triplets, but there's a limited number of rhythms. And if you're making the claim that X number of them cannot be accented, and it, if, uh, if you do, then you're activating a part of your brain that, that puts you in touch, more in touch with the demonic realm. I'm not saying I just totally disagree. What I'm saying is, you know, I would like to talk to this guy. It short circuits the frontal moral lobe. So it, what does it mean to short circuit the frontal frontal moral lobe? Gets them the frontal moral lobe. To a place to where they can become possessed. It's called the place of the crossroads between the physical and the spiritual. So a place where they be can become possessed. Again, I've only been told this by people from people that uh, that know the scripture a lot better than me, but I was under the impression impression that the scripture teaches that people that have been born again cannot be possessed. And now in the church, we have this thing going on and we call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. And I don't, I don't. That's where, that's the, the part of this video where he really lost me. Whereas like, I don't, I don't do this wailing thing. I, I mean, people get into the music. I like when they feel blessed by the music that I and others make. I think that um, that music does evoke a certain thing. I think you really have to be careful about your emotions and test the spirits with the scripture and test the spirit with uh, with your your discernment that you pray for that you pray that the Holy Spirit gives you. But I don't call call it that. Maybe I'm under the influence. Maybe I'm under the influence of, of demons or whatever. I I pray for it. Um, I have my Christian brothers and sisters that. I ask to check me that I am actively right now in this video asking to check me if you think that I'm overcome by some spirit that isn't God. But I, I don't know, man. Now in the church, we have this thing going on and we call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. I don't I don't know, man. I just don't know. That's that's not that mind blowing. And it's to me, it's a little bit of a red flag that that seems so profound. Pretty profound thinking. That's pretty profound. I didn't even know he was going to say that the word profound may and look and i'm not trying to poo poo any denomination or sect or whatever but i'm not like a Pente pentecostal or whatever i'm not a slain in the spirit you you know people listening to this uh video probably know more about this stuff than me so i'm not trying to say 
that these people aren't Christians or whatever, but these people that are like fallen back or, or whatever, and they're like hyper emotional. I've since I became a Christian, I've been known for being very wary of the hyper emotionalism. Lately, I think that's a lot of that is because I know that the real deal exists. I've wept many times in the past year, being convicted by God during prayer meetings. I try to not be a really emotional guy. I try to really control them because I think that a lot of it is fake or I think a lot of it is, is social pressure or it's a put on and a certain amount is straight up demonic influence. Uh, like you're talking to a spirit, but you don't know which one it is. So uh, this guy is clearly more of a experienced Christian than me. Some kind of teacher. He is in his own channel where he's teaching and teaching about, uh, about, about music. You can check out his channel, but I don't call it that. I, we, you know, the, the songs that we pick for church, a lot of them do have a backbeat. I mean, we have a drum set playing, but it, like a rock drum beat is by definition a backbeat. So it's like, it's mm, ka, mm, ka. the accent of the snare on the one and on the two and the four is the backbeat he's talking about. Now, the vocals that are going on in the songs, we're just kind of singing them the, the way they're um, written. The idea of syncopation being wrong in the worship context because it violates expectations whose expectations it seems to me that the expectations that one should be worried about in the worship context is god's expectations because i don't know what beat god expects that seems to me like a if anyone knows that, you better tell me. <laughs> you better tell me. That way I line up these beats properly, my lord. And I, I you know, when I make videos, I'm I'm using a bit of a jesty tone. That's kind of my flavor. But I'm serious. I, I seriously would like to know what God expects of my worship. I I really would like to know. I want a clean heart and a repentant, repentant soul when I'm entering into the presence of God. So I would like to know, but this thing where the a certain beat triggers a certain part of your moral brain and people call that, what did he say, what did he say again? Crossroads between the physical and the spiritual. And now in the church, we have this thing going on and we call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. I, you know, the moving of the Holy Spirit certainly exists in the church and it also can be, something that is not happening that people think is happening because of their emotions what i dispute is just that it's this one beat beat placement and rhythm of all the musical fields is kind of my you know forte it's kind of the thing that i take the most seriously a lot of musicians say oh just do it by feel man do it by feel and you got to feel it and it's just, oh yeah, just place it wherever. Rhythm is not a wherever thing. Music is like a grid. And if there's six, if 16, 16th notes in the grid, you have the ability to accent between one and 16 of them at all times. And if you're dividing them into triplets, then there's that times three. It's like a grid and you have the ability to place each one where you want them on purpose. I mean, you can also, when you're doing rhythm by feel, you're also doing that. You're just not knowing where, where they are. But my point is I've taken very seriously in my career the ability to, to place and discern one, certain ones on purpose through either counting out loud or listening back to something and, and practicing it. So to me, this video raises a lot more questions than it really has answers. That's pretty profound thinking. That's pretty profound, yeah. Okay, so all of a sudden... But is it true? We're getting this, our mind going, and we're getting, uh, not our mind going, we're getting our emotions going, we're taking that frontal moral lobe and we're casting it off, and whatever the preacher's preaching goes in without interpretation. God said no. Reason. Reason with me. So I know right there, that is not of, the, not, not of God, it's of the devil. And I, I, you know, there's a lot of people that I worship with that both reason very, very well, but also get really into the music. Because the devil doesn't. These people really know the word that are in my life. They want us to reason out who he is, because if we really reasoned it out, what he stood for. I don't believe, like, if I know that the, the beat is syncopated on the uh of one in the first measure, I am reasoning out a syncopated. And what he's trying to do for us, we would run from. See, you know, syncopation is also intellectual. I mean, if you have the, they have these charts over here and these syncopated beats, that's on the and of four and it holds over past the, the 
past the one, the next note hits on the and of one. That is reasoning. That is intellectualizing the beat. I think that this guy is just saying that getting too into the music is it. You should be wary of that. And I agree with that. Him. Exactly. But because we're adopting his things and we're embracing his stuff, if you will, and his music, we run to him and run away from God. Is it working? So is he saying that syn just syncopation in general is of the devil? And I would counter again with can people in cultures where the beat is syncopated as the norm, should they like learn Western music so they don't fall into the temptation of sin? That to me is bonkers. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think he's not saying that, but that'd be one of the things I asked him if I had him on my show. It's, uh, it's very powerful. And so the reality is <laughs> yes. Okay. Music can profoundly influence our characters. And so music thus becomes a very moral issue. If we're listening to the right stuff, wonderful. It leads me to God. And it leaves my thinking intact. If we're listening to the wrong stuff, bye-bye. Frontal, prefrontal cortex is actually what it's called. The front of the brain where your right. character is, your, where your will is, where you want to obey, where your reasoning powers are. That's bye-bye. In fact, some of the music rips it out, spits it in half, tears it in half, and stomps it on the ground. I will say when you're not, you know, if you're not careful, some music can take you, uh, can, can like, activate the flesh more. It's but honestly, dude, that, like, I do have some experience with this. This is very embarrassing for me. But, I mean, I, you know, before I was a Christian, I used to really like going to clubs. But is that, like, going to clubs and music festivals where, like, the flesh is activated a lot more? But is that the setting or is it the music? Incredible. It, it, or is it's probably both, right? Well, what it but if you're just listening to it while you're cleaning your house, is it the same thing? Does. It really makes me think. I, I know I have a hypercritical tone and I know that I'm kind of, you know, really using this video as a criticizing thing. I'm not saying this guy is totally wrong. I, I think that he's making it way too simple. You know, I've asked the questions I've asked already and I, it just seems a little too simple. Like if he's saying that his take on music is the morally right one, that means that he's advocating for everyone else to adopt this way of thinking. And I think that God's truth is, his moral truth is global and universal, which means that all cultures and all peoples, and it's true for everyone all the time. And what I, my take is that people should be careful. And they should be careful. They should, you know, test the spirits against the word. They should have a church that does the same thing. And they should be, they should be careful about that. And, you know, what year is this guy trying to go to? We just sit there in an alpha pattern, whatever the music. See, I don't know about the brain thing. We sit there in an alpha pattern. I know these things exist. I've never really studied them. I didn't really pay attention in school. Um, so, you know, we'll see, I guess. But the, the whole brain science thing, is there a brainwave pattern that God likes us to operate in more? What it does. And we just sit there in an alpha pattern. Whatever the music is teaching, whatever the, not, now listen, not just the lyrics. I said the music is teaching. Because people go, oh, well, this music, it has Jesus lyrics and it talks about Jesus. Okay, that's the greatest claim out there in CCM, the Contemporary Christian Music Movement. The problem is music itself has a motive. Music itself has a, an attitude. Music itself has body language. So I could say, I love Jesus. Now, what did you think when I said that? That you love Jesus. Why? The way you said it. It was the way, exactly. It wasn't what I said. Those words are pretty, a good clue, but it was the way. Because I could also say this, I love Jesus. Yeah. Now, what would you say about that? Well, you don't like him very well. You're saying something's up here. That's, Why? Yeah. Because the motive of my body language, it betrayed the words. Now, I will say that there's also another video to be made, not going to do it today, on the lyrics themselves. Because a lot of these contemporary Christian songs, they say, I love Jesus. But they're really, if you look at the context of what they're saying, they're kind of talking about a, a Jesus that is not biblical. And that, I think, is a, is a, to me, that's a way bigger pitfall than the music and the syncopation and the chords and stuff like that. He hasn't gotten into chord structure in this uh in this video right here but i think that the bigger issue and this you know this video i would say is at least 10 years old right i mean it said it was 
uploaded in 2011. It looks older than that. It, it probably looks from the mid 2000s or something like that. But from what I've listened to in contemporary Christian music, way less so w with these. I haven't heard many contemporary Christian songs that have like a hip hop groove or, you know, like a syncopated club type deal i've heard a lot of them that are kind of just like soft rock songs but many of them create a false jesus with the lyrics that to me is a way bigger issue than than where the accent of the beat is placed the and i totally reject this thing of just because it's syncopation according to the west is that it makes you reject reason because we can reason you know if you gave me a syncopated beat i could pick it apart like a bird and tell you exactly where beats are. And I could feel them intellectually and re reasonably as I'm listening to it. I guess maybe I've done more homework and studied rhythm more than other people, but that part of it is really weird to me. Music that we listen to can betray the Jesus lyrics. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I think that the Jesus lyrics can, can, can betray the Jesus. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I think, again, not to repeat myself a bunch, but I, that is what I see as the way bigger issue in, in the you know, hundreds and hundreds of songs I've listened to now. Okay, so what if we are listening to music that has all these driving beats and it's attached to a genre of rebellion, sex, drugs, and rock and roll? It undermines the Jesus message. Absolutely. And everybody knows that except for the Christians. <laughs> well, yeah. It's incredible well, to me. Okay. I mean, this Christian has thought about it for sure. And I would say this too. Before sex, drugs, and rock and roll, well, you're not going to get pre pre sex and pre drugs, but before rock and roll, you know, rock and roll started in the 50s, right? You know, was the backbeat ever used in worship music? And I think it probably was. And they say that the, the, you know, the Beatles and Elvis kind of started the backbeat thing when they, when they started their music. But I find that to be ridiculous, actually. I mean, maybe the popularization of it. But you can't tell me that there wasn't a church or a tavern or just a campfire before the 50s that didn't exit, accent the two and the four. There's only four quarter notes. So you're saying that they didn't think to accent 50% of them for all of human history prior to that, or better yet said that the times they did was in the, um, was in the context of the occult and in the, the context of sinful degeneracy. That seems a little bit ridiculous. So I, you know, I thank the person for sending me this. It definitely made me think I've heard something like it before, not in terms of the, uh, uh, of terms of the occult before, but I've heard that it does evoke a, you know, a more sensual, fleshly thing, uh, and and brain science has kind of proven it. But I do, I'm not trying to be a a gotcha guy. I'm not trying to be a contrarian here. If it is true, I want to know. If there is a proper way to to do music that God likes more, trust me, I want to know and I want to change it. But what I've i what I've found with that video we watch, just watched is a it's a little bit too oversimplified and it's a little bit too like eureka moment like i found the thing i found the thing that makes everyone get into a trance state and i will you know i'll speak for my own worship life i don't find people at at the church i got go to or me or um getting into the trance state that much into this you know, into this filled, falsely filled with the spirit thing. Maybe true. I need to know more. I'm probably going to email that guy and try to get him on the show. It, it, and it, it just doesn't ring true to me, especially across cultures. Like I know people that um, have been in the mission field before. And, you know, I, uh, I have a family member that just uh, that just went in on a mission trip to Uganda. And she showed me some videos of them worshiping and one of the songs is in their uh, their native African tongue, but there were also there was a video where they were singing Father Abraham, and they cannot help but to sing it like Africans. Uh, no duh, right? I mean, they're from there, they're raised there. It would probably distract them to sing on the beat. So they're like Father Abraham, you know. So so that is syncopation right there. And is that opening themselves? It just doesn't ring true on that level. And I, again, you know, just to close the video out, 
God's truth is true all the time. It's universal across all cultures. You know, I know there's context and there's Bible passages where, you know, causing the weaker brother to sin and, and Paul said he has become all things to all people. But it seems like God's moral truth is true all the time. So it just leaves me with a lot of questions. I don't think what he's saying is completely false, but I don't think it's, it's completely true either. And the implications, if, if everything that he's saying is true, then the, the cultural implications of what you know, the global church is doing and how it needs to be changed are staggering. And I would ask that guy what he would have people do about it. And he didn't get into that in that, uh, in that interview. But uh, I think that's where we'll, where we'll end the video. I'll see if I can talk to that guy. And I'll see, you know, it seems like this is a uh, segment from a longer interview. I'll try to find that as well. So thanks for sending the, me the video and I'll see you guys next time.